dumb ways to die. There's so many dumb ways to die. How y'all doing? I'm Big Al, and welcome to the garage. Today's installment, we're back at it with the electric fuel pump conversion for the 65 Corvair. Now, I haven't really done a whole lot since my last video because my little girl's birthday party and a bunch of other things, my time just has not been my own. I did go ahead and assemble this. This is a fuel pump with a bypass block from California Corvairs. This is just a solid machine piece of aluminum here in the middle that you put the top and bottom from an old fuel pump on and it just routes the gas through. That's one of the simplest ways to handle that problem. This covers up where the wheel comes up and down. We have our fuel pump itself. This is an Advanex model E8016S. It's a marine carburetor type that's designed to suck the gas out of the tank rather than push, like a lot of other electric fuel pumps. And finally, the thing that makes it all tick this is our Revolution Electronics fuel pump controller. This functions as a very important job. It is a safety switch. The way it works is it monitors the tachometer signal, and as long as it's getting a signal from the tachometer, it keeps the fuel pumping. Should the engine stop, the tachometer signal stops, and this shuts the fuel pump off so you don't keep pushing gasoline into your engine. That is extremely important in the event of an accident. You don't want to add an engine fire to your list of woes should that happen. So always, if you're doing an electric fuel pump conversion, install some type of safety switch. There are multiple types. There are ones like that that monitor the tachometer signal. They're probably the easiest to deal with. You have others that monitor oil pressure. And there are a few others. I don't necessarily remember what they are. But, anyway, another reason I haven't made a whole lot of progress with this, I'm kind of at an impasse as to how to actually mount this pump and where to locate it. One option is to locate it in the engine bay, which is what another Corvair owner and YouTuber did. And I was originally planning to go that route, but he is running a single carb on his 140 with pipes that come down to each of the ports. I'm running, going to be running the four individual carbs, so that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for this thing. Plus, I'm not entirely sanguine about having these rubber tubes and clamps in my engine bay. I think that's an engine fire waiting to happen. How does that song go again? Dumb ways to die. There's so many dumb ways to die. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So another option that I'm pondering is where I currently have an inline fuel filter mounted above the back passenger side wheel. What I need to do is get the wheel off and get under there and look at how I'm going to install this thing. So let's get to it. Let's get the car up in the air. Let's pop that wheel off and have a look-see. Okay, so here we are. This is the fuel filter and there is a break in the metal gas line, which makes this a pretty good spot to put the filter, the uh, pump, I'm sorry. Now, one option would be to just put the pump right here and then make some kind of metal bracket or something to secure it either here on the uh, rear shroud or down here to the heater duct, which is blocked off and unused. Each has its kind of pros and cons. Putting it in here obviously means running less rubber fuel line, which I definitely like. But putting it here, it would be more secure. It would be up and protected, but still easy to get to if the wheel is off. In fact, I didn't really even have to take the wheel off. All I had to do was jack the car up. But then I have to run a bit more rubber fuel line. And the starter solenoid is right here. 
So we still have a potential spark source there, but not, I think, as dangerous as putting it in the engine bay. What I do worry about, though, are these screws and a fuel line rubbing on them, so I would have to put some kind of a safety cover on them. What I will do probably is put some Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer on here real quick, just to keep that from rusting any further. Um, while I got this thing out, and I may take the remains of that heater hose out of there, I mean, it's half rotted to death. I don't drive the car in winter, so there's really no need for it. So, I definitely, I think, have a couple options, and I need to sleep on it. You know, this is something I plan to really take my time on, because I really need to get it right. It's not something I want to just go blundering into, and then regretting it later. Okay, so I lied. This video's not over. We are officially down the, while I'm in here, rabbit hole. I want to get this ratty heater hose out of here. I tried attacking it with a screwdriver. Man, it is not easy to get at it. Let's see if I can... What am I stuck on? Do with a ratchet? Gosh darn it. Really need to get at it from underneath. Okay. Let's see what I can do. A few moments later. There it is. That's a better angle. Much better angle. Alright. This clamp is rusted. And of course everything back in the day had to be flat blade. Oof. Let's try the ratchet. Probably would have been smart to hit that thing with some PV blaster, but... All right, while we're at it, let's just grab all the sockets so I don't have to constantly get in and out of under the car. Yeah. Okay. I think I've got an 8 millimeter on there. I know it's not metric, but sometimes you can cheat and it, oh. Room to swing a ratchet, of course. There is a reason this thing is on here, I think. Oh man, I just got junk in my eye. This is why you wear safety glasses, people. Brother, this thing does not want to come off. Okay. Okay. No, you're not going to win that easily. I think I will put an impact on it if that's what it takes. Oh my golly, I'm getting filthy. <sighs> yeah, that ain't budging. Time for PB Blaster. That's what I probably should have done initially. Want to play this game? All right, I'll play. Mm. Hitting everything but what I'm trying to hit. You stink monkey, I can't hit the darn thing. Okay. So I can't maneuver the damn can. Got it. See you stick in there now. I'll probably never get the impact in there, but it's not going to stop me from trying. That's all loosen. Can't get it in. Nope, totally stuck. Tool 
itself is not going to fit. That's the problem. That's why this thing is still in here. Because there's no way to really get at it. Mm. Okay. But you made it personal. Oh, Jesus, this thing coat full of leaves. Mm hmm. That do anything or did it just round it off? Mm. Oh man, that thing is on there. Mm. Need my three eighths ratchet. Mm. The only way this thing's coming off. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna get you in here. Wow, the whole clamp is flexing. How did that come off? Man, oh man, that doesn't want to come loose. <clears throat> it's coming. <clears throat> doesn't want to come, but it is. Hey, I got a good quarter turn out of it. Yeah, that's all it wants to go, unfortunately. What's coming on up there? I think the whole clamp might have just self-destructed. What am I doing? It's not clockwise. This needs to go counterclockwise. You dolt, you did it again. Turn it thing in the wrong direction. What an idiot. Oh, I just broke the head clean off. Well, that's one way to do it. I mean, this thing was trash anyway, but let's get it out of here. Holy mackerel, this thing is like, this thing is beat. I should probably get some screen and a new clamp and just block this. Oh. Okay. Let's get this out very carefully. Is this rotted out old one too? I should probably just get rid of. <clears throat> new heroes, unfortunately, are quite costly. So that's why I only car in the summer. I know, this thing looks just like a clothes dryer vent hose, doesn't it? Looks like, but it ain't gonna take the heat. Oh, oh there's another freaking bracket in here. Dad gum. Yeah. Let's get you out of here then. Whoa, there's some crud in there. I'm going to do this by feel, it's not pleasant. Too small. Always seem to underestimate the size of sockets. Now I can't get this one back on the holder. I'm really batting a thousand here. Bugger, 
get on there. Alright, yeah, that one will fit. Oop. He's unloosened this time. The reason you don't want to use a metal clothes dryer holder, well, you got the terminals for the starter motor right here. You do not want to short that out. All right. Now, let us very carefully get this thing out of here. All right. Oh yeah, this thing's full of junk. I'll just buy the sand. Me, I've got mouse nests and everything in there. Definitely good riddance to that. A lot more room to work. All right, let's see what was in here. Okay, not as bad as I thought. Good riddance. And so yeah, not a very exciting video today. Um, hope you'll please like, share, subscribe. I'll catch you on the next installment. Hopefully we will actually be making some progress on the installation and getting this old girl back on the road. So what are your opinions? How should I mount the uh, filter? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.